Hello everyone, and it's um, Nappa here. I'd just like to uh, make this video to sort of talk about Akira Toriyama's death. This will probably be different than my other current videos, I guess, because my other past videos are like very different than my current content. But I just made this video sort of to talk about Akira Toriyama's death. I know that by the time this is uploaded, it's been a while since Akira Toriyama's death. Probably because I was trying to video capture some gameplay so that you're not just listening to my audio. And I didn't really want to use my YouTube avatar over it because, you know. Gonna be honest, it's not like the other videos and using my Nappa avatar while talking about Toriyama's death is just... I don't know, I guess it felt like it might have been a bit disrespectful. I mean, I guess that the video game gameplay could also be considered disrespectful. I guess, but like, you guys get my point. And, um, I think when I found out about Toriyama's death, here's a bit of a depressing thing, is that it was the day after I think I was asleep when the news broke out of it. In my good old home in Canada, where I am totally not stuck in my parents' place and living off the government. But, um, basically, I found out about it. I wake up in the morning. I see a notification from Lost Paws, and I'm like, this has to be a prank. There's no fucking way, right? And so uh, I click on the video, and I'm watching through it, and I'm like, holy shit, he's serious. And, you know, I think I sort of, like, strike up a conversation with one of my brothers. I, like, you know, talk about it. And, like, Michael's, like, you know, doesn't even seem that phased. Because I guess he's, like, dude, I saw this coming. Um, Toriyama's been preparing for it, I think, with, like, Toyotaru and all of that stuff. And I'm, like, fair enough. But, like, come on now. Toriyama's been, like, the writer for Dragon Ball for years. And so when I go outside, right, where I thought, you know, it wasn't going to affect me too much. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's like, because I started my YouTube channel when I was 12 years old. Not even joking. I had another YouTube channel before this. Where I basically post stuff with my face. And I think now I'm not really that comfortable showing my face because cancel culture has sort of become a really big cesspool. And people are getting canceled left and right these days. Either for justified reasons or for the most unjustified reasons imaginable. And because of that, like, some people, like, could probably pull out stuff I said in my past. Even some old Discord messages from when I was 12, and I think I was, like, talking with this one kid. Which, for all I know, that one kid, um, that used to go by Kid Kakashi on YouTube. For all I know, they might just, you know, one day decide, here's the shit he said when he was 12, and, um, yeah, cancel him, guys. He, he said shit as, like, um, Zarbon from Devil Artemis. He, he was a fucking weirdo. Quick, cancel him, right? But, um, yeah, that's sort of why I didn't show my face. I know that was a bit of a side tangent, and I am sorry. I will get back to what I said about Toriyama, and what I, I mean, I'll go back to what I have to say about Toriyama. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, though, I started my YouTube channel when I was 12. And this specific YouTube channel that this video is on would not exist without Kira Toriyama. I just want to make it 100% obvious that this channel... It would not exist. And that means basically that if a Kira Toriyama wasn't making Dragon Ball, if he never made it, it wouldn't exist. Because Dragon Ball Z Abridge wouldn't have existed. Why am I mentioning Dragon Ball Z Abridged? Because my YouTube channel was inspired off Dragon Ball Z Abridge back in the heyday. Back in the good old days of me being 12, I was in my, I think, junior high school at the time. I think me and my buddy, um, let's just call him Joe. Let's just call him Joe. Mainly because I'm recording this video and I don't really feel like asking him if he's okay with me, you know, using his name. But, um, so Joe and I, you know, we're like best buds. I think I got teased by the other kids for being weird. And I was weird. I, I'm 12. I'm watching 3M challenges and crap. Like, I watched, I watched some weird stuff back then. It was a mix of 3 a.m. challenges and video game repair stuff. Basically, people fixing and repairing video game consoles, which, I mean, I would say it's aged pretty well, considering that I am now probably going to be 
replacing my GBA SP, sh you know, shell for like both of them and giving the blue one that I had, like the one that was like blue, a sort of a um, new screen. But um, yeah, okay, 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 that, okay, that's a bit too much of a side tangent and I am sorry. Gonna be honest, I would be more crying if this was like, you know, I guess video was recorded on the day that Akira Toriyama passed away. Like, it's still affecting me, but I am slowly moving on from it. And honestly, like I was saying, though, when I was 12, like me and Joe was fooling around, you know, outside. I was doing what any kid would do and just, you know, pretending to be Dragon Ball characters. Mainly, dra we were acting as Dragon Ball Z Abridged characters as I would play the things in class. I think I would purposely avoid the scenes in Dragon Ball Z Abridged with, with the swear words, right? When just use scenes with, like, the censor beep swear words, mainly because I knew that my teachers were just going to go, No, stop playing that, right? And so I basically, you know, showed him some Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and we, we bonded over it. He even introduced me to Five Nights at Freddy's. It was, like, my first time you know, playing FNAF, I guess, on, like, I think we played it on a website. That's the equivalent of those websites that had those Game Boy games that you could play off, like, your browser. And so we sort of bonded on that, right? And we were in the, like, I think it was, like, the outside recess. And we were joking around. He was pretending to be Vegeta, and I did Nappa. And so I was like, hey, Vegeta, don't drop the soap. Uh, and look, okay, I sorry, I had to do the voice. I am, I'm, ta I'm trying to take this seriously. I hope you guys realize. So don't even go. He's not taking this seriously because he's doing the voice. I'm just trying to, you know, reenact it the best way I can. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because well, you see, basically when I was there, right, and I did the voice, I was like, holy shit, I can do the voice. But honestly. I could not do the voice. I could not at all do the voice. In fact, when I was trying to do the voice, it sounded more like I was whispering it. I was like barely getting it right. So it's more like, hey, Vegeta, don't drop the soap. And like, I'd say that's like how my nap impression used to be like. It was sort of like I was whispering it. And like, you could probably see that in my earlier YouTube videos too, that I was not, I was not a voice actor naturally. Like, I can do voice acting now way easier, but, like, back then, I was not a voice actor. In fact, I would say I'm not even a professional one right now. I've never really had a voice acting job. All my voice acting stuff that I like to do on my free time, it's all from experience and practice more than it is from classes. I didn't really start getting a drama class till way later on in life. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, you know, I did that voice and I was, like, you know, so excited. So I practiced the whole day. Even when my teachers are going, you can't keep doing that voice. You're going to hurt your throat. You're not used to all doing that, all of that type of rasp. And, and right now and these days, I would just say, if I would tell my past self anything, I would tell them to just tell them to shut the fuck up and mind their own fucking business. Like, I'm fucking 12 years old, dude. Like, let me, you know, have a passion. Let me have a hobby. Like, if, I, if, if you discovered you could do something that you thought was neat when you were a kid, and and your parent was like, nah, nah, don't even bother with that. It's, it's not even worth the effort. Like, that's, I'm going to be honest, now that's what it kind of feels like. I mean, maybe it wasn't what they were go trying to do, but you get my point. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, you know, uh, that's sort of like how I started my channel. I discovered I could do an abridged nap of voice, and I think I sort of built upon it. Until it grew to what it is now. I mean like. I'm not even really. I used to do reaction videos as Nappa. Because there were YouTube channels like. Prince Vegeta. Lord Frieza. Oh Lord Frieza. I remember what you did. <laughs> oh god. But um yeah. You know I think. um If you don't know what Lord Frieza did. He basically started some drama of Prince Vegeta. I am drawing some blanks upon it right now. Because. It was a while ago, but I think it was sort of like Lord Frieza was being scummy and basically being a prick to Prince Vegeta and all of that sort of stuff. And to make the long story short, Lord Frieza basically just went, 
yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm just gonna like start flirting with your woman or whatever. Who was like the YouTube channel Boomer Bunny and that's now has I think she now runs the Tales and Sonic Pals YouTube channel. She's not really much active on her Boomer Bunny channel anymore, and honestly, good for her. She's now focusing on her passion, which I guess she's more passionate about Sonic, and who can really blame her on that? But anyways, they get back to the point, like, all those YouTube channels that did these impressions of Dragon Ball characters that I used to do videos. There was some other Nappa channel that also did a Prince Vegeta, no, not Prince Vegeta, King Vegeta voice on the channel, right? And, like, they did the, oh, Vegeta song, right? And, like, all that would not exist without Akira Toriyama. He has inspired and touched multiple hearts, including mine. I was obsessed with Dragon Ball since 12. And honestly, without Akira Toriyama, I wouldn't have most of the stuff I have now. I wouldn't have my, you know, um... I wouldn't have my passion for anime. Dragon Ball Z was actually the first anime I watched while knowing what anime was. It was also something that I would use to bond with my brother... Let's just call him um, Michelangelo or something. Like, let's call him the Ninja Turtle. And um, we used to bond a lot over it while my other brother, Willy Wonka, let's just call him. Um, he was not really a Dragon Ball person, and he introduced me to a bunch of other animes. The first anime after Dragon Ball Z I watched was, like, Blood Lad, because Willy Wonka said that it had a Dragon Ball Z reference, and he figured I would like it. And honestly, I did, and I kind of wish that that anime continued, because it was actually pretty good for my memory. But, um, yeah. So, honestly, I guess to, like, end off this video, Akira Toriyama, you have touched a lot of hearts. You've become important to a lot of lives. You and your creations, Dragon Ball, Dr. Slump, Dragon Quest, whatever... Whatever creations, you know, you've made in, over the years, that I'm, I'm sure there's multiple, but, like, those are the ones I know of, will live on and touch the hearts of many more people. More specifically, Dragon Ball, as Dragon Ball sort of become a timeless classic that a lot of people will introduce to their kids and family members for years to go on. And, um, yeah, that's basically it for um, this little video I recorded. See ya.